like my back's been split in two. It's almost like there's someone living here that doesn't know they're dead. Oh, I can so smell that now. Disgusting. Jackie. I'm going to die. This week, the rescue mediums visit Brampton, where on the outside, this residence seems picturesque. But inside, the home is neither safe nor sound. I was already a little bit uneasy, uh, and Faith announced that she was going to Halifax for a week. So I arranged to have one of my friends come and stay with me. All night long, I could hear the door opening and closing, and someone going up and down the stairs. And then the next morning, he assumed it was me, and I assumed it was him. I'm a real skeptic when it comes to these things. <laughs> um, I don't think I want to believe that there's anything happening, but I heard the sound of a woman. Okay. That was a little unnerving. Slowly, I'm starting to really believe that there is a presence here. The rescue mediums are driven to help. It's a very blustery day, isn't it? I'm glad I'm in the car and not outside. Yeah. Jackie and Alison are renowned psychic mediums who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. The two hot spots in the house would be the basement, as well as upstairs where the bathroom and the spare room and our room is. A gorgeous church. Yeah. The rescue mediums have been given no prior knowledge of their destination. I wonder where we're going. Absolutely no idea. Even the name of the town has been kept secret until now. Although days earlier, they had some otherworldly premonitions. An injured or a trapped bird. And this was after a dream I had that a bird in the kitchen, and it was a white bird, a bit like a dove, and it was injured. And I was trying to get to it to save it. A spinning feeling, like even a vortex, mm. a cold frame outside, or a door that opens into the ground. It's sort of on an angle. Lights flickering on their own. She was accusing me of not turning off lights as I would go into a room. We went downstairs and turned off all the lights together, and then all of a sudden the lights all came on in the basement. Then it continued <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> a figure that's been seen by a window. I saw a person standing, kind of looking out the window. When you see an outline of a person, there wasn't really anything distinctive. A very strange feeling to a kitchen. Now that's interesting, because that's where the bird was being caught. Oh, OK. In addition to their premonitions, the rescue mediums have created these psychic drawings of what they expect to find during their investigation. The homeowners eagerly await the lady's arrival. If it is a spirit that's trapped, we hope that the rescue mediums can guide them in the right direction where they need to go. And if they are insistent on staying, I just hope that they turn the lights off because electricity is expensive. I think that's the scariest part of having a ghost is getting your hydro bill at the end of the month. <laughs> Jackie and Allison are the rescue mediums. Psychics who make house calls. I want to do it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Jackie. Hi, I'm Ali. Nice to Hi. meet you. Hi, Ali. Nice Ali and Ali. Hi. Yes, I know. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I figured, well, if she goes by Alison, I'll go by Ali. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, well, if you want to follow me. Thank, Thank you. you. The rescue medium sit down with the homeowners to present their premonition. A feeling of dread, as if something not so nice is about to happen. Panic. Yes. yes. Panic rising, yes. Hearing a faint voice. Absolutely. Right. OK. Right. A Scottish connection? Yes. Right. Yeah, we both had that, didn't we? <laughs> and then I got 1911. OK. Yeah, OK. A figure that's been seen by a window. Inside, Time. looking out. Good shivers all the <laughs> A spinning feeling. Absolutely. OK. Everything will be moving, and it's almost like wild, like out of control. If you were to stand up, it will, you really would feel quite... I just go under the covers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
This one is strength and the feathers and the eagle's head there. And then uh, this gentleman here. I remember this face, but not from this place. So have you experienced paranormal activity in other houses? The previous house I lived in, I do remember this face because it was terrifying. OK. I think we'll start outside. Alison. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Next. Do you remember that dream I said to you? I saw a white a bird. White bird. Alison has a dream come true. Somebody fighting. And an angry spirit engages the rescue medium. And I'll, I'll give you one. This year, the autumn has not only brought turbulent weather, but also the rescue mediums to this home in Brampton, where eerie events have disturbed the homeowners. And every so often you hear the creaks in the floor, and it's an old house, so it's understandable. But it sounds very much like someone walking. It's spooky. Beginning their investigation by exploring the home's exterior, the rescue mediums are drawn to the backyard. We saw a door in the ground. A door that opens into the ground. Oh. I mean, this is freezing in here, isn't it? Absolutely freezing. Yeah. Jackie feels a presence. Oh, I have got a real tightness around the chest. As if somebody would have suffered with that. Right, okay. We've definitely got somebody with us straight away. No, don't want to go there. Just want to go in the house. Okay, let's go and see. Yeah. While the ladies venture inside the home, the storm outside becomes stronger. Does it foretell what is to come? So, should we go in the living room, do you think, John? Yeah. That white bird. Do you remember that dream I said to you? Um, I saw a white, a white bird. And I was walking into the kitchen, it was ahead of me, and it was flapping, and it was injured. I'm pretty sure it's symbolic, but in what way, I don't know. Well, birds are messengers, aren't they? The ladies enter the kitchen. Well, this is where I is was. Is this the kitchen you saw? Yeah, yeah. But for Alison, it may not be the first time. And the bird was there in front of that window. And I, I, I was panicking, trying to get to it to help it. And it was a white bird. It was a white bird. like a dove or, or something. Following Alison's winged vision, the rescue mediums ascend to the second floor. Cold. Yeah, chill. totally. My back's aching. I feel like my back's been split in two. Really have got awful backache. It hurts, though. Right, time to take it off. Is it going now? Yeah. Yeah. God, good. that was a bit intense. <laughs> Feels very strange up here, doesn't it? Yeah. Darkness falls. The ladies continue their extensive search of the home. I feel really strange over here, Alison. Just see if you can feel anything. Okay. Just touch that wall and see. I just feel like an immense cold here. Let's stand still a minute and sort of see if we get anything from this, because this is extremely cold. Swirling, swirling, just swirling round and round. Spinning feeling. Everything will be moving, and it's almost like wild, like out of control. It's going down. I'm just going to sit down for a minute. Let's fill it full of light. Jackie and Alison concentrate their psychic energies in order to divine the home's darkest secrets. into the hallway and he's throwing that down he's taking his hat off he's saying across the sea the image is gone it's just gone 
I've got the swirling mist again now and it's going shh. We need to go downstairs. Yeah. Following the pull of psychic energy, the ladies descend back to the first floor. Oh, Alison, look. It's a feather I've drawn. It's pointing down. down. We so need to go. Down. This premonition made manifest seems to predict that significant discoveries are waiting in the basement. It smells a bit weird, in not it? What, what are you smelling? A horrible smell, like, what, like? A, like human sort of excrement. Yeah. Oh God, I can smell it now. It's disgusting. Oh, I can smell that now. Oh, okay, that's... just let me try and. Okay. I feel like... I feel like I'm sort of down below somewhere. Yeah. I'm in something that's sort of hollowed out. No, it's gone. I'm OK. Somebody fighting. Real big fight. I could really have a go at somebody. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, could you? Oh. Well, I can't get my breath now. Next, Alison continues the battle, and Jackie gets dangerously close Jackie. to the troubled spirit. I'm going to die. Jeez. Oh, Night has fallen over this Brampton home, where Alison has seen a dream vision come true. And in the dream, I was panicking. And they have discovered an angry spirit with a violent past. Somebody fighting. But I can't get my breath now. <sighs> you know, like I've had all the air knocked out of my body. I could see a fight, and then he, he it was like he was working through me. And I don't like that feeling either, to feel like no. a minute you could really sort of hit somebody. I think we need to go back upstairs. Yeah, well, yeah. let's go and have a look in the kitchen again. Oh, I've, I've, I've calmed down a bit now. Yeah. Led by the image of the bird, the rescue mediums return to the kitchen, the scene of Alison's vision. I can see a railway station. The man with the, the bag over his shoulder again. And he's saying goodbye. That is an image that comes like that and then it's gone. Well, it's like everything I've had. It's just been a bit of fighting. fighting. Oh, so you've got fighting? Yeah. I wonder if it's somebody who served in the forces. I feel really cold. I've got pains in my stomach. Oh, these are not nice pains. This is all like chronic pain. <coughs> <coughs> Can we sit down? Yeah, sure. Because I just feel really exhausted. So let's go and sit on the floor and get you more secure. Relocating to the living room, the rescue mediums seek closer communication with the spirits. A woman coming in. A woman? She's looking out through the window. She's waiting. He's trying to get her attention. She can't see him. I know. But he thinks she should. Jackie. I'm cold. I'm on board a ship. And I'm gonna die. Are you sure you're not already dead? Jackie. Jackie is overshadowed by the powerful spirit. Oh, jeez. Right. Alison quickly realises that the only way to rescue Jackie is to rescue the spirit. I'm gonna send you over to the light, OK? You're already dead. You're just going over this, over and over this in your mind. I'm going to draw lots of bright colours, OK? OK, 
Can you see it in your mind's eye? There's a path. I want you to start walking along the path. I can see you. You're in a uniform. Walk along the path. Okay. There's a light coming towards you. Can you see the light? This is the most beautiful light that you've ever, ever seen. This is where you're gonna go, okay? Come on, come on. Keep with me, keep with me. Can you see the light? Okay, walk to the light. Can you see the doorway? I'm opening the doorway, okay? I'm opening the doorway. <sighs> that was a hard work one, that was. I panic for a minute though, because I thought I'd lost you there. <laughs> oh, I could see it so clearly, Alison. <gasps> I was just so totally there with him. Right. Well, right. I think we'll head off home. <laughs> Next, the rescue mediums present their findings to the homeowners and compare it to independent research. Spirit that we rescued, going to tell you who he is and why he was trapped in this house. Inside this home in Brampton, the rescue mediums have met a troubled, violent spirit who made the ultimate link with Jackie. Come on board a ship. I'm gonna die. Before being shown into the light. Jackie and Alison will now present the results of their investigation. The spirit that we rescued, we're gonna tell you who he is and why he was trapped in this house. So, um, we knew somebody was with us, but we yeah. didn't know who it was at that point. We were soon to find out. He's coming to the hallway. And it felt as though he'd been away a long time, and I actually said, across the sea. In the premonitions, we both had a Scottish connection. Mm -hmm. A Scottish connection? We both had that, didn't we? <laughs> Thomas Irvine, um, who originated from Scotland. This is the spirit who needed to be rescued. In 1869, Thomas Irvine was born in Scotland. These passenger lists show that in 1911, he immigrated to Canada with his wife and their six children. If you remember, 1911 was on the premonition, yes. so the year 1911. One nine, one one. The family eventually settled in Brampton and moved into this very house that Faith and Alison now call home. In June 1915, Robert, their son, enlisted in the Canadian Infantry. Thomas also enlisted. Father and son were sent overseas to fight in World War I. Thomas was 41, his son Robert just 18. When we were doing the investigation, Alison felt as though she was underground. And... I mean, something that sort of hollowed out. Both Thomas and Robert fought on the Western Front, where soldiers lived and fought in the squalid conditions of deep trenches. He went through absolutely appalling conditions. In addition to the constant danger of enemy fire, the trenches were filled with rats, which quickly spread disease. And then it said, and the smell. We both picked up on this, the mm -hmm. smell. What, what are you smelling? Like human sort of... Excrement? Yeah. Whilst he was there, he actually contracted nephritis. Nephritis is the inflammation of the kidneys and results in chronic ailments and severe pain. Got a real tightness around the chest. I feel like my back's been split in two. Got pains in my stomach. Thomas's illness became so advanced that he was sent by ship from the front lines to an English hospital before finally sent home to Canada. What was very, very sad was his son, Robert, was actually shot by a German sniper. On August the 23rd, 1917, the Brampton Conservator wrote that the saddest part of the father's homecoming is that he had to leave his son buried in the shell-torn fields of Flanders. 
Thomas had to deal with his son having been killed. He kept giving us images of his wife being there. The rescue mediums believed that the second spirit was Thomas's wife, Jemima, distraught over the loss of her son. His health deteriorated, suffering with all these illnesses, and he died very, very suddenly, and he died in this house. Mm -hmm. Thomas's death certificate shows that he died on May the 4th, 1923, of heart failure at the age of 53. Very interesting. Yeah. But what of Alison's dream vision of the white bird? The dream that I had of the bird in front of the window. The fact that the bird was trapped, if this sort of say there is going to be a trapped spirit. Birds often symbolize the soul's release in death. While military funerals feature the release of 21 doves, Alison's vision of the white bird trapped in the house unites these two meanings shedding great light on the spirit of Thomas Irvine. Just out of curiosity, have you noticed a difference in the house since we did the investigation? We slept like babies last night. Oh, good. <laughs> it was great. It yeah. was great. <laughs> I believe you've converted the skeptic. Oh, <laughs> really? <Fabulous. laughs> so we've done our thing. Yeah. <laughs> the trapped spirit of Thomas Irvine now set Thank free. The ladies bid farewell to the homeowners. Thank you so much. No, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> OK, bye. bye. Oh, I think they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah. Do you know, I'm so glad we were able to help. Jackie and Alison retire to discuss the grave situation. Why geographically do you think that we're doing the chairs here? Well, because this is the dead centre of Brampton. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> you like that, didn't you? Go on, give us a swig. <laughs> it's a bit of a spirit of our own. Bye, that puts hairs on your chest. <laughs> <laughs>